Hi guys, what is up and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all my favorite makeup products of 2020. I know this is like a thing here on YouTube. So many people do like awards for makeup for 2020, like just their most used products and things that they really loved throughout the year. So that is what I'm going to be sharing with you all today. I'm sure if you've watched any of my previous videos or follow me on Instagram, you can probably guess what some of my favorites are because I feel like a lot of these have been products that either tried out in ipsy videos or like incorporated in haul videos or get ready with me's and i'm sure i posted about a lot of these on my uh, instagram stories as well um but i'm so excited to share all of my favorites from 2020 with you i feel like this was a year that i definitely tried out more makeup than i have in previous years but i feel like i definitely was not wearing that much makeup in 2020 which makes sense because we've all been wearing masks and just the whole nature of like not going anywhere not going to classes but I still feel like I tried out a lot of makeup this year and found some really, really great products that I'm going to love throughout hopefully 2021 as well. Before we get into my 2020 favorites though, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel for more beauty, fashion, and lifestyle related videos. And now let's jump into my 2020 makeup faves. All right, so I filmed a lot of clips of these products in natural light, so I will insert those clips when I'm chatting about the products just so you can see how they look on their own in a natural lighting. But let's start off with, I guess we'll do it in the order that I do my makeup in. So first up, we'll talk about primer slash like skincare prep. All right, so because I haven't really been wearing makeup all that often this year, and when I did wear makeup in 2020, it wasn't really for a long period of time, so I kind of don't really have a primer per se to share with you guys, but I have been a really big fan of this year kind of incorporating skincare as my primer step in my makeup routine. So the product that I have for my kind of primer primer skincare prep uh, step is this Clinique Super Defense City Block Broad Spectrum SPF. I have really gotten into SPF this past year. I feel like I wore some sort of SPF on my SPF. Gosh, I can't talk today. I wore some type of SPF on my face basically every day throughout 2020. I just feel like I really needed to take that step in my makeup and skincare routine to kind of really just protect my skin against all the sun. Even if it's not summertime and if I'm not outside, I still usually sit by my window when I'm doing schoolwork and obviously when I'm driving and stuff, my skin still does get exposure to the sun. So that is ultimately why I started incorporating an SPF into my makeup routine and I absolutely love this guy and it does have like a nice kind of shimmery like glowy base to it not necessarily shimmery but it's definitely a luminous finish on your skin so I kind of like that underneath of makeup because it does not necessarily prolong the wear of my makeup like a primer would but it does have that nice kind of just fresh looking base to start off your makeup routine with so I really really have enjoying and enjoying this guy throughout 2020. Next up for foundation you guessed it, it is the Wet n Wild Dewy Foundation. I have been using this nonstop since I tried it this past spring. I use this foundation throughout the spring, summer, most of fall and honestly the start of winter too. I just think it is so pretty. I am wearing it today. It has a nice kind of true medium coverage but it is definitely buildable. I usually do one layer of it because I put kind of a lot of concealer on top of it so that kind of helps build the coverage up a little bit but I have tried doing this with two layers and it works just fine as long as you kind of let the first layer sink into your skin a little bit before applying a second layer but I absolutely love this foundation. It is so incredibly affordable too. It is like $4.99 or $5.99 at the drugstore at Ulta. Um, so it's definitely a win. I love the price point of it. I love how dewy it is. I love how it makes my skin look and it just looks so natural but still provides enough coverage and it definitely has that kind of dewy finish that dry skin people like myself love. All right, next up for concealer, this is also a drugstore favorite. It is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I fell in love with this concealer this year around the same time, I think, that I tried out the Wet n Wild Dewy Foundation. Now, I'm not wearing this concealer today because I am all out of it, so I'm wearing a different concealer. This one is not really a favorite, though. It's the Benefit... Uh, 
Boing Cakeless Concealer, I think that's what it's called. I do like it, but I definitely prefer this over that concealer. This just has so much coverage. I love how fat the wand is. It's just so easy to apply with a wand this big. And it is nice and luminous and dewy as well, which I think is such a great combo with the dewy foundation from Wet n Wild. Even other kind of not as dewy foundations, I find that this looks so good with because it just has that like hydrating finish that just makes makes your under eyes look so flawless and smooth and just so illuminated and it looks really pretty like on the t-zone area of your face as well so I definitely love this guy it is very affordable too at the drugstore and it was my favorite concealer of 2020 Next up, let's chat about powders. I actually finished this one up today. This is the Kat Von D, or I guess now it is KVD Beauty, um setting powder. It's the Locket one, so it is a very strong setting powder. Um, I, like I said, used this up. I have like none left. I used the last little bit of it today. I have a lot of trouble typically with transfer of my mascara onto my under eye region, so I generally have to set at least my under eyes every single day. Sometimes I will get a little bit wild and set the rest of my face like in my smile lines too, but I really never put powder on my forehead or my cheek region just because my skin is already so dry there. So so I don't like to layer it with a uh, powder on top, but I always, always, always use um, setting powder on my under eyes for that reason of transferring and sometimes in my smile lines too. Like I mentioned, if I feel like I need a little bit more done up makeup look and kind of care about my smile lines, but this is an amazing setting powder. I basically use this, I think, for the entirety of 2020. Now, it is a very, very small size, so you're probably thinking, how in the world did this thing last you the entirety of 2020? But because I really only put it on my under eyes on the days that I am wearing makeup, specifically when I'm wearing eye makeup, this lasted me the whole entire year. I think it just looks so pretty on the under eyes. It doesn't really look too cakey, especially combined with like a more hydrated dewy concealer. It just really locks in that makeup and I haven't had any issues of transfer when I use this on my under eyes. So it was definitely my favorite setting powder of 2020. Let's move on to brows real quick. So I am wearing the brow product that I wanted to mention as my favorite, but I'm also wearing something else in addition to it because I wanted a little bit more of my brows today than just this. But my favorite brow product of 2020 was the Benefit Gimme Brow. I love this stuff. I am pretty much all out of it. I think it is about time to buy a new one. I'm not really sure how much is even left in here to kind of make an impression on my brows, but I love this stuff for my brows. Today I used a pencil and then put this over top of it. I usually do that on days where I'm wearing a little bit more of a heavy eye look just because I feel like just this throughout my brows doesn't kind of match my eyes but on days where I'm not wearing say any makeup or maybe just a little bit of eye makeup I always go in with just this on my brows it has enough pigment to it that it kind of makes my brows a little bit fuller but honestly what really sells me on this product is the wand itself I feel like the size of this is absolutely perfect to just run through your brows and kind of make them look a little bit more fluffy and fluttery and just kind of full so I absolutely love this brow product. Um, I actually kind of dig the mini size of it. I think it is so cute, but I will probably repurchase either the mini size like this or the full size just to kind of get a little bit more for my money probably pretty soon because I think I'm almost all out of this, but I think it just makes my brows look so much more full and feathery and I really like that look and it's so easy to do with this. I know some people spend so long on their brows and I just really don't care enough to use like eight products on my brows every single day and make sure they're perfected. This is just like an easy hack to kind of, whoops, fell down my shirt sleeve. Um, this is just like kind of an easy way to kind of get that fluttery, feathery brow look without having too many steps and that's why I really enjoyed this one. Moving on to eyes, this was probably my favorite category to pick out for my makeup favorites and I ended up going with the Makeup Geek palette that I actually created. I have a playlist here on YouTube of me creating this and then trying it out for the first time but this is hands down my favorite 
palette of 2020. Definitely my most used palette of the year and I definitely see myself using this a lot in replacing these shadows as I run out of them because they are just that good. This is one of the best quality eyeshadows that I have ever tried. Makeup Geek is kind of like a tad bit on the pricier side but it is not anything outrageous. You can find Makeup Geek shadows at Target but actually what I did for this palette was go through Makeup Geek's website and I did the customization option. So I customized this palette on Makeup Geek's website and picked specifically shades that I either knew I liked or shades that I knew I would get a lot of wear out of and just picked to put them in the palette and they came as like little single shadows so you can actually take these out of here um, so you could replace shadows as you need or you can switch them out as you see fit but the shadows are just so so pretty I'm wearing it on my eyes today the mattes have impeccable pigmentation to them they're just so pretty so buttery soft and so easy to blend on the eyes and then the shimmers are really impactful too but I think I definitely like the mattes from Makeup Geek more than the shimmers but the shimmers are still amazing so this was definitely my favorite eyeshadow palette of 2020 and it was definitely my most used palette of 2020 because again I picked all of these shades so I picked ones that I knew I would get a lot of use out of and ones that I knew I had like clothes to match and ones that fit that I could incorporate into eye looks that I knew I liked to do so this is definitely my favorite palette and the quality is amazing too so uh, I love this guy and it's my favorite eyeshadow of 2020. So mascara was kind of a tough category for me because I ultimately really wanted to go with my favorite mascara of all time, the Lancome Monsieur Big mascara, but I can't really remember the last time I used that. I know I have so many unopened bottles of that in my mascara drawer just because I always have it in stock in my makeup collection because it is my favorite mascara ever, but I can't really remember the last time I used it in 2020 if I even used it at all because I've had so many mascaras that I've gotten either from Ipsy or just like free samples that I've received from like Sephora or Ulta with like along with purchases. Um, so I have been trying out a lot of mascaras in 2020 and I do really really miss my Lancome one but I wanted to go with something that I've found myself reaching for a lot during the past few months of 2020 which is the IT lash blowout mascara. I have it on my lashes today and I know a lot of people really really enjoy this mascara and then some people don't enjoy it whatsoever. I am kind of that person that obviously really enjoys this mascara. I just think that it really does blow out your lashes lashes it coats every single lash which I really like I do like the luminous mascaras but I think I found myself being more picky on the mascara like coating every single lash and kind of making them look a little bit fuller yes I do like to have length in my lashes but I kind of have that naturally like I don't feel like my lashes are short then I need them to be super lengthened with the mascara but I do like when all of my lashes get coated by the mascara and it just makes my eyes look so much more open and wide and just brighter and more alive so that is why I really enjoy this mascara and it also has a wand that I prefer in a mascara I like that this one is kind of just like a feathery brush whereas some mascaras have that like hard plastic that you tend to stab yourself in the eye with when applying so I really enjoy the wand of this and I just think that it makes your lashes look so pretty and full and just really opens up the eyes so, so this is my favorite mascara of 2020 next up we will finish up the face before I move on to lips which is ultimately like my favorite category because I love lipstick but for bronzer I have my Ofra Americano bronzer this was hands down my most used bronzer of 2020 I am wearing it today I wore this a ton in the summer months when I had a bit of a tan because this is like a deeper bronzer so I haven't used it too much into like the fall and winter time just because I feel like I could get a little bit heavy-handed with it and it starts to look a little bit orange especially on like my natural kind of really pale skin but I I used it today and made sure to use a nice kind of bigger fluffy brush to kind of just dust it onto my face and kind of frame my face a little bit with it and I really enjoy this bronzer. It does have a tad bit of shimmer to it which is something that I like in a bronzer because I feel like having dry skin I don't love matte bronzers I feel like the kind of luminous bronzers just look a little bit better on my skin and kind of bring my face alive so 
This is my favorite bronzer of 2020. I've already hit pan on it. I feel like I'm gonna have to be repurchasing this into 2021 at some point, but I really love this bronzer. For blush, this was a tough call too because I had two that I was going between, which I'll tell you both of them, but I will ultimately show you which one I ended up going with. So the one that came in in second place, I don't have on me right now, but it is the e.l.f. Monochromatic Multi Stick in the shade Bronze Cherry. I believe and I've been using that a ton for blush when I'm not using the blush that I'm about to share with you but that one is really pretty really affordable and it just blends so nicely onto the cheeks and I really like the color of it it's kind of like a kind of rosy-ish brown nude and it is just absolutely perfect but the blush that I ended up going with as my 2020 favorite is the Rare Beauty liquid blush in the shade Joy. I'm wearing it today and I just can't get enough of this blush. I think it is so pretty. I tried this out in my Rare Beauty video and have been in love with it ever since trying out. You definitely have to kind of use it a few times to get the hang of it because these are super, super pigmented blushes and you really don't need a ton at all. I haven't tried any of the kind of lighter shades, like the more pinky and nude colors, and I feel like I could definitely get away with using a little bit more of that and that's a little bit more forgiving on a skin tone like mine, but being that this one is so pigmented and a little bit deeper, like a more true reddish blush color. I use the littlest bit of this and it still goes such a long way on my cheeks and I find myself always having to dab over it with my sponge because you just need such the teeny tiniest amount to make an impact on your cheeks. I literally just take it out and barely even touch it. Like I will just touch the tip of this to my cheek and that is enough to blend out and be pretty rosy on my cheeks. But I love the color of this. I love that it is a liquid blush. I was always really, really scared of liquid blushes because I feel like it would just make a mess on my face. But once you get the hang of blending this out with a brush or even with a, with a sponge, I feel like it looks so much prettier than a powder blush, especially with dry skin. I just feel like this mess it meshes with your skin and foundation so well. And it just leaves the cheeks looking so glowy and dewy and just... You kind of like you have a natural little rosy cheek going on. So this is my favorite blush of 2020 and I feel like it will be a favorite for a while because of how little I've been using of this and how often I've been using it. I have like not made a dent in the bottle at all so I have a feeling I will have this fate for a very very long time. And then for highlight I really hadn't been wearing highlight that much throughout the year, especially in the spring and summertime, but I have been back into the highlight world throughout the fall and into the winter season and the one that I have found myself reaching for more than anything else is this Ofra highlight in Star Island. I remember using this a ton like last winter too, so I guess like January, February 2020, and then I kind of stopped using it into the spring and summer, like I mentioned, but I am back to using this highlight basically every single day, and I'm wearing it on my cheeks. It just creates such a nice kind of wet glow on the cheekbones, which is what I really like. It definitely doesn't leave like a streak on the cheek, especially if you have a skin tone kind of similar to mine. Obviously, you have to find something that kind of mes meshes <laughs> I have such trouble saying that word today. You have to find a highlight that kind of meshes with your skin tone well enough so that way it won't look like you just have like a big streak on your cheekbones. And this one I feel like just looks so pretty and so poppy on the cheeks and is one that I really enjoy. So this is my favorite highlight of 2020. Oh my goodness, I forgot to mention something else about the eyes. So I do have an eyeliner that I wanted to share with you as my 2020 favorite. Now I definitely do not wear eyeliner on a daily basis. I probably wear it maybe two, three times a month, if that, but I have found my favorite eyeliner of all time this year, which is the Revlon Colorstay Micro Hyper, Preci Hyper Precision Gel Eyeliner. I love this stuff. I have mine in the brown shade. I'm wearing it today just on my lower lash line, and I feel like this is the perfect eyeliner. It's not messy at all, and it is just like a twist up one so it's not a scratchy pencil but it's also not a liquid liner which I am incredibly intimidated by but this one just glides on so easy. I love how thin it is because I don't wear eyeliner a ton. I feel like it really stands out when I do wear eyeliner but being that this one is 
so teeny tiny it's just really nice to kind of run right against your bottom lashes and it just makes your eyes a little bit more defined without getting too crazy all right and lastly for lips I have three things to share with you a lip liner a lipstick and then a gloss so we'll start off with the lip liner my favorite liner of this year has been this ColourPop lippy pencil in the shade I think this is just the regular BFF one. I absolutely love this color. It does have more of like a matte formula, so if you're not into that, I don't really think you would like the ColourPop lip liners that much, but it is so comfortable to wear, and this color, like I said, is just so pretty. It's just like a true kind of your lips, but better nude, especially if you have more like peachy kind of brownish lips naturally, but I absolutely love the color of this. I will swatch it here. It's just like the perfect liner. It is one that you have to sharpen though, so keep that in mind. Um, but it is very affordable from Ulta or ColourPop's website. I think it's like four or five dollars, something along those lines. And it is such a beautiful, beautiful color and one that I will definitely be repurchasing after I use it up. All right, I will move on to gloss next. Even though I would typically do this last, I want to save the lip product that I'm wearing today as the last lip product to show you. So this gloss that has been my favorite throughout 2020 is the Maybelline Lifter Gloss, specifically in the shade Stone is the one that I have. This gloss smells amazing. It looks amazing. It feels amazing. It's just like the perfect gloss. I like that this one is one that doesn't have shimmer in it, so it's just kind of like... A regular old gloss with no kind of shimmer no sparkles in it and it looks so pretty on the lips I again love that this one has kind of like a fat applicator so it's just so easy to glide on the lips it smells wonderful it kind of has like a vanilla y scent to it and it's just so pleasant um, and I love the color of it too. I wish they would come out with more colors in this line because they have a lot of like pinks. I picked the most brownish nude gloss that they had in the collection. So I'm wishing that they will come out with some more colors in this because the formula is so comfortable. But this has hands down been my favorite lip gloss of 2020. It's so comfortable and I just love it so much. And then almost the last product of this video is the lipstick that I have on my lips today. I fell in love with this lip product when I first tried it out. I think it was like around the spring uh, Sephora VIP sale, so like April, May I think is when it was, and I actually saw this on Bite Beauty's Instagram and immediately thought to myself that I absolutely had to have it because this is like my perfect lip color. So this is the Bite Beauty Power Matte Lip Crayon or Lip Pencil, I think is what they call it, in the shade Calvados. I'm wearing it today, as I've mentioned, and it is my perfect lip color. This is like what I would create if I was creating a lipstick. It's just the color that I always tend to go for. I like that it is a little bit red because I love red lips, like probably more than any other lip color, but I also like that it's it is a little bit brown too, kind of like that in-between like brick reddish brown shade that is just so wearable, at least in my opinion, for just kind of everyday wear. It is so comfortable too. I like that it is like kind of more of a matte formula, but not entirely, but it's not drying on the lips at all. It does transfer obviously because it is just a regular old kind of lipstick formula, so it's not going to dry on the lips or anything, but it is so comfortable and I love that By Beauty is clean and basically Basically, like you could honestly eat their lipsticks because everything is just like a good ingredient in it but this is hands down my favorite lip of 2020 and I will definitely be wearing this a ton throughout 2021 and repurchasing it I hope it never goes anywhere on Bite Beauty's website and that's for because this is one that I feel like I will always have in my lip collection because it's just the perfect lip color. And then the last product, I have a setting spray that has also been one of my favorites for not just 2020, but years now. It is the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. I love this stuff. Basically, when I want to set my face, I always reach for this. It is my go-to setting spray. It smells so good. The mister is so fine, and it definitely makes my makeup 
set into the skin and just really sink in and look much better and not powdery, not cakey at all, and it makes my makeup last a very, very long time. So that is hands down my favorite setting spray of all time, not just 2020. All right, so those were all of my favorites of the year. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've really been looking forward to filming this because I feel like I've had so many good products that I've tried out this year. It was pretty hard to choose just one for some categories, especially the blush and the mascara but ultimately I feel really good about all of the products that I chose as my favorites and I hope that these will continue to be my favorites throughout 2021 because they are just that good in my opinion um, but thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of this video I will have everything linked down below in the description box in case you guys want to try it out and maybe make it a favorite of your year in 2021 or whenever you may be watching this video um, but thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end like I mentioned before I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel before you leave for more beauty, fashion, and lifestyle related content. But thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in my next one. Bye!